Google, Microsoft, and a bunch of other companies have just rolled out official support for passkeys. No more staring at a pile of sticky notes trying to remember if your password is password123 or password321. And remember those pesky phishing attacks where they try to trick you into giving away your password? With passkeys, those attackers can just kiss those schemes goodbye. In this video, I'll show you what a passkey is how it's different from a traditional password, and how to start using them. And I can do this because I am. The High Tech Nomad here, and welcome to another video. On this channel, you'll find easy to understand videos where I'll teach you how to use the amazing technology that's available to everyone, pass keys. Now that's a word you're gonna hear a lot from now on. Let me show you the difference between a pass key and a password using a simple example. We're gonna pretend that this lock is a traditional password. Now I can't open it because I haven't set the combination. In this case, the code is 543. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to set all of my locks to the same password. That way I don't have to remember that much. It's easy to forget which password you used on which website. So what you end up doing is writing it down. This lock is more like a pass key. The only way I can open this is I have to put the correct finger on the lock, this finger on it, no. But now when I use the correct finger, it opens right up. I don't have to remember anything at all about this lock. Anytime I want to open this, I can just put my finger on it and open it. There's nothing for me to write down. There's nothing for me to give away. There's nothing for anybody to trick me out of. This is how pass keys work. What we need to do is let your desktop or laptop know something specific about you besides your password, because we've already seen that passwords are no good. I'm going to type in Windows Hello or you'll see sign in options. It's the same thing. Now, when we get into sign in options, as you can see it already knows who I am. This is a way for it to know that it's really us. It can do facial recognition. It says unavailable, and that's because I don't have a webcam connected to this computer. It will recognize your face, and that's unique to you. Fingerprint reader. Most laptops have fingerprint readers now. I'm going to put a link for a fingerprint reader for a desktop. I love this one. I've actually mounted it under my desk like a little secret button so that when I need to use it, I just kind of slide my hand under the desk. It's nice and easy. Windows PIN is going to be a four-digit PIN, and more than likely you're going to write it down, or it's going to be the same one that you use over and over again. And lastly, we have security keys. I've done a lot of videos on security keys. The one I would suggest is the security key that has a fingerprint reader in it. Once you've set one or more of these up, I've set up the fingerprint. I've set up the security key. I'm now going to go to my Google account to set up pass keys. We're going to turn on pass keys for our demo account. I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask me for the password type in the password, and then it's going to get me right in to the account. We want to turn on pass keys, go over to security, and it's going to give you an overview of everything about your accounts. We want to fill all these in because once we switch to pass keys, if something happens to that pass key, it's not very likely, but if it does, you want to have one of these backup ways of getting in or you're going to get locked out of the account. I'm going to go down to where it says pass keys. And before it allows me to turn on my pass key, it's going to make me verify again that it is me. And in this case, it's going to ask for my security key, which is already in my USB drive. I'm going to go ahead and tap that. As you can see, I have two security keys. And now I'm going to add a pass key. It says, okay, I'm going to add a pass key. Which device do you want to use? I'm going to say this device. That means this it says, okay, you're going to set up a pass key using your Windows computer as the pass key. Is that okay? And the answer is yes. So we're going to click on that. And now it's asking me, well, what's your pin? Just to make absolutely sure it's you. That's my pin. 
And now it has said, okay, you can use your pin, you can use your fingerprint, you can use your face, any of those things will now allow you to log into this account. You'll see now where it says pass keys created. You'll see it actually has added the pass key for this particular computer. Now I'm going to log out. Now I'm going to try and log back in. And now you see it says, it says, Hey, I now support you've turned on pass keys. Do you want to use your pass key? And I'm going to say yes. And it says, okay. And now it's saying, Hey, windows computer, is this really him? If so, I need either the pin, the fingerprint or a security key. I'm going to actually just touch my fingerprint reader under my desk. That's all there is to it. I no longer have to know what the password is for this account. It's that simple to get into this account. What do I do if my fingerprint reader stops working? It broke and I need to get into my account. I'm going to go here and click on the account again. It says, I see you have pass keys set up. Do you want to use your pass keys? Well, I can't use that pass key. I can't use the fingerprint reader. I could use the pin, but let's just say everything wasn't working. So now I can say, try another way. Here it says, use your pass key or a password. I still have my password. I only have to use it in the rare case that I'm unable to use my pass key. I'm going to go ahead and say, use a pass key. I prefer to use my fingerprint reader to slide my finger under the desk and Bob's your uncle. I'm in. You might be wondering if you can replace all your passwords with pass keys. The answer for the moment is no. Websites need to add specific code to make the transition from passwords to pass keys. However, since Apple, Microsoft, and Google all now officially support pass keys, it won't be long before all websites support them. To put it into perspective, consider the transition from micro USB to USB C. It was just five years ago, and now Everybody is using them. Currently, many websites allow users to log in using their Google, Microsoft, or Apple accounts. This means that once you've enabled pass keys on those accounts, by extension, the website you're using to access these accounts with will be utilizing pass keys. So you may be asking yourself, where is my pass key stored? What if my computer breaks? How do I share a pass key with someone else? Those are all great questions. If you haven't done so already, I urge you to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to answer all of those questions and more in the next video of this series. I will say this as a spoiler alert. Pass keys are not a fad. This is something that people have been working on for years and all of those questions and more have already been figured out. If you use a Google account, I encourage you to enable and start using pass keys as soon as possible so you'll feel more familiar with them. In my next video, I'll show you how to enable them for Microsoft and Apple. You're obviously interested in this subject, which is why you're watching this video. In the comments below, let me know, have you already started using pass keys and how do you feel about them? Until the next time, this is Ormond Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, Signing out.